When I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. Hey, everybody. Jerry Williams, a.k.a. Greater Sapien here. Thanks for stopping by. Today, we look at number 32 of Eric Dubay's 200 Proofs, Earth is Not a Spinning Ball. Dubay says, If gravity is credited with being a force strong enough to hold the world's oceans, buildings, people, and atmosphere stuck to the surface of a rapidly spinning ball, then it's impossible for gravity to also simultaneously be weak enough to allow little birds, bugs, and planes to take off and travel freely, unabated in any direction. Not really. Not if you understand how gravitational force is known to work in a mathematical sense, and not if you understand how gravitational force is measured. When I hear things like this, the first thing I wonder, well, the second thing I wonder after, what? How? What I wonder is if people like Dubay understand that gravitational force is the weight of an object. That's not the same as its mass, though they are related. More massive objects have more weight, meaning they are pulled with more force toward the center of the Earth, which also means they require more force to lift off the surface of the Earth. Oh, and just so it doesn't go unsaid, at one rotation per day, the Earth is spinning pretty slowly. So let's be done with that BS. Now, I know this is basic stuff, but some people seem to need it spelled out for them. So, in order for an object to lift off the surface of the Earth, it needs to push off or get pulled up with more than the force of gravity pulling it down. That is, more than its weight. So a housefly weighing one fifteen hundredth of an ounce doesn't have to exert very much force in order to lift itself off the ground. An airplane has to exert a lot more and something the size of an ocean even more so. In fact, the amount of gravitational force on an object, the amount that needs to be countered in order to lift, is in direct proportion to the mass of the object. These are all things that are indisputable. You cannot believe in gravity. You can think that it's all made up, but you can't dispute the fact that more massive objects require more force to lift them. Call that force holding things down, whatever you want, but don't claim that there isn't more of it with more massive objects. And much like gravity, globe deniers, your force doesn't allow buildings to rise up and float around willy-nilly. Speaking of moving around, Dubay claims little birds and bugs and planes travel freely and unabated in any direction, which is an odd thing to say given that birds and bugs consume and expend a tremendous amount of energy in order to fly. Planes burn fast amounts of fuel in order to achieve flight. And all of them can only do so for a limited amount of time. Is that moving freely? They must all come back to the surface, just like people who can jump and lift themselves off the surface. The only difference being how high and for how long. <laughs> but what I find most laughable is the comparison of oceans, buildings, and atmosphere to birds, bugs, and planes. <laughs> this is another situation where globe deniers go for extreme examples with a desire to make their opponent's position look absurd, but end up clowning themselves. <laughs> What's one important difference between a building, say, and a bird when it comes to movement? What about an ocean and a bug, apart from size? I'll give you another one. A dead bug and a live bug. A dead bug can't lift itself off the surface of the earth any easier than a building. Things that have mechanisms for locomotion have the ability to lift off the surface, but it's not easy and it ain't free. But I have to admit, shooting down this claim was. That's my job! That's what I do! I don't lose! I win! I win! Is there no one on this planet to even challenge me? Maybe you came by to congratulate me on last night's victory.